Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to a pretty chilly Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and for our January edition of Hill Beyond, insightful conversations with our alumni. I'm Zach Lehman, head of school, and I'll be your host tonight. And tonight we have two really special guests, uh, Gregory Clark, class of 2010, and his wife, Kami Wood, class of 2010 as well. Um, I, uh, that's my favorite picture so far because their dog looks pretty close to my dog, Ruben. Um, uh, but I, I'd like to introduce Kami and Greg. Uh, Kami is a marketing manager of emerging platforms and podcasting at A&E Television Networks. Her journey in the world of television began in 2014 in upstate New York, where Kami was a one-man band reporter for a local CBS affiliate in Watertown. Those early reporter days taught Kami how to be an expert communicator and how to seamlessly shift gears at a moment's notice. At uh, moment's notice, skills that have enabled her to thrive in the rapidly changing world of streaming and on-demand television. After leaving the news industry, Kami married her high school sweetheart, Greg, and they spent the first year of marriage in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where Kami freelanced for small production and marketing companies. In 2017, Kami and Greg gave up their large one bedroom with two parking spots for a 300 square foot studio apartment in Manhattan. Kami joined the A&E distribution team and today she manages the marketing relationships between A&E and their streaming and podcasting partners. She holds a bachelor's degree in journalism from VU, Boston University, and is currently a part-time MBA student at NYU. She lives with Greg on the Upper East Side and enjoys hiking, singing, and cuddling with Arlo, uh, right there in the picture. Um, no offense, Greg. Uh, Greg uh, is a third year radiology resident at NYU Langone Hospital. Greg started his medical career in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, where he worked as a in a pharmaceutical lab while applying for medical school. In 2015, he married his high school sweetheart, Kami. The following year, Greg and Kami moved to New York, where he would start medical school at NYU. After graduating early in three years, Greg matched into a residency program at NYU for diagnostic radiology. He attended Dickinson College, where he majored in biochemistry and molecular biology. He was a member of the track team and captain of the cross-country team. In his free time, he's still an active and competitive runner, recently competing the New York Marathon in 2019 in two hours, 34 minutes, and 30 seconds. Not bad, Greg. Some of Greg's other favorite activities are hiking, going to concerts, and trying as many restaurants as he can. And of course, he lives with Kami, his wife, on the Upper East Side of Manhattan, and Arlo. Um, so there you have it. Now that I've uh, impressed you with their resumes and backgrounds, I get to embarrass them a little bit with some old pictures. Not so embarrassing. Great photo there of Kami. She was the co-president of Hill Trebles, uh, and she was a head prefect. Pretty uh, important roles here at the school. There's some good pictures. Looks like yearbook dial pictures. Sometimes we get parents to send in some pictures. I'm not sure which ones these are, but Looks like she's having a good time with friends there. Um, Greg uh, was uh, varsity soccer, varsity track, and was best general record, a pretty impressive uh, award uh, here at the Hill School. And then there's some of his pictures. Uh, yeah, so he's looking uh, pretty studious in some of those. Um, all right, and then their superlative in the uh, dial was cutest couple. And so that was, I guess, prophetic. Um, so let's see, are they, uh, are you here? Can you join me? I'm gonna stop sharing these photos. 
All right, there they are. They're still a pretty cute couple. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Have we aged well? <laughs> <laughs> pretty well. And for the record, you're not in that, uh, you know, tiny little studio apartment right now. You're at home visiting your parents in Connecticut, so. Yes, mm -hmm. lots more space here. Well, welcome. Uh, do you recognize some of those photos that I shared? Do they look familiar? Were they from the dial? I think so. I think they must be yearbook photos. I don't know where else those you know, photos would have come from. <laughs> we get we have eight yearbooks because we each have a copy from all four years. So <laughs> they're actually here upstairs in the house. So there's too many. I'm surprised we haven't looked through them recently. But yeah, that's an interesting uh, tradition at Hill. Like uh, at my, I went to boarding school, and we only got one our senior year. Um, and you know, we had people write in it that year and, um, it actually, it was in a box in my basement. It was in a flood and it's, so it was ruined. Uh, I still have it, but it's like a brick. You can't open the pages and read any of the comments. I'm not sure that any of the comments were relevant anymore, but I love that strawberry festival where we all, you know, yeah, um, yeah. occasionally, very occasionally a student will ask me to write in their yearbook. <laughs> Usually an underclassman who still is, you know, maybe do a little brown nosing or something like that, but <laughs> in any event. Um, so let's talk a little bit about your time at Hill. Um, you both, uh, were you both here for four years or was it? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, we were both here for four years. I was a day student for the first three. I lived okay. about 20 minutes or so from campus. Okay. Yeah, so I lived all live in years. Lancaster at the time? No, no, my, I lived in like Chester Springs area. Okay. With my parents, yeah. And Kami, yeah. how about you? Yeah, I boarded all four years. I remember my mom, she's gonna laugh because she's listening. She begged me to stay home in a way. She was like, are you sure? She was obviously supportive of Hill, but um, you know, she was sad. And I was like, no, I wanna go and I wanna board because we were just far enough away. We're, I'm from Doylestown. So that was, it was like an hour, an hour and change. So tough, just far tough. enough away, it would have been tough to, to board or to be a day student, so. Yeah, well, um, and so at what point did the two of you meet? Was it like day one? Or we like... can't remember meeting. I yeah, can't remember funny, meeting, yeah. but like, yeah, must have been orientation, like for, like freshman year. But we were good friends. Um, By the end of freshman year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. We were friends. First. We didn't start dating until junior year. So. so what was that memorable moment? What was, what was the change from friends to you know, romantic? Oh my gosh. I was, a friend of mine had a, at Hill had a crush on him. I won't name names. And um, I was watching actually, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually trying, I don't know if she'll remember this. Um, I should reach out to her sometime on, you know, Instagram or whatever, but um, I was trying. Up. We could call her up right now. This will be <laughs> yeah, we're calling. <laughs> I was trying to get them together. And that I think kind of triggered for me, like a lot, a bit of jealousy and, um, that was when I, I knew, and I, I had, I hope she remembers it this way, but I had a conversation with her, like letting her know that that was the way it was going for me. And uh, we ended up- It wasn't like a hands off, he's mine. Yeah, I, I mean, no, it was a very, I, I hope she remembers it this way, but I, I remember like writing her a message. Facebook Messenger was like big at the time because we were away for a break. And we didn't have cell phones at that time the way people do now. Right. We didn't have an the iPhone just came out maybe like our senior year. So I shared like a razor with my sister, Grace, and like wasn't really texting a lot. So I remember I Facebook messaged her. A razor. I had a razor phone. Those are I actually <laughs> like a razor phone, like a little flip thing. It was oh, really me too. Cool. I know. It fit right in the pocket. It was good. You yeah. can still get those. Yeah. Um, what uh what she's leaving out is the part at the end of freshman year where I asked her out and she said as and I'll quote. Are you joking? <laughs> <laughs> well, and so then, oh, and I like to say that unrequited love for a couple. Yeah, of I like to say that she changed her mind after I made the soccer team junior year. I think. Oh. That was right. He came yeah. back summer of junior year, made the soccer team, and you grew. You really grew up. So, <laughs> I remember all the girls were like, "Oh, Greg made the soccer team. He's so cute this year, junior year." <laughs> so I. You know, well, you guys are clearly out of practice. You're calling it freshman year and junior year. Yeah, that's true. I know. Oh, you you oh got to get you back to third form, fifth form. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Mr. Eccleston would be very upset with you if you. Yeah, we're gonna get a demerit. <laughs> yes, a demerit. Yeah, for not using hill appropriate words. Um, all right. So you you dated for basically for two years, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, what's it like dating at Hill? That's sort of a weird thing. 
Yeah, that it was, was so fun. <laughs> it was so much fun. What do you think? Yeah, it was, it was, I mean, yeah, it was fun. Um, you know, it was, yeah, yeah it was interesting. Yeah, no, it's just, it's interesting because you have such, um, your time is so structured. And yeah. so you have like, almost like designated, like, oh, this is when we get to hang out, like, you know, like between, mm -hmm. uh, was at the end of study hall and lights out or whatever. There's, there used to, there was like a half hour or so to hang out and like, you know, like it's very sort of structured when you'd get to see each other, but it was, right. it was really fun also just being so close to each other. Yeah. But we would sit together at the, uh, uh I'm forgetting what they're called, but when we, when it wasn't seated dinner, when we had free buffet, 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 buffet we had buffet. Yeah. We would sit together with all our friends and that was like the time we really got to like get to know each other and laugh and connect and just be silly in the dining hall. And then I remember too, like during that study hall time, you would like, uh, you would say, hey, come out and I've got a blanket and a playlist and we're gonna go sit in the benches by the chapel and we would share headphones mm -hmm. and like listen to his special playlist. <laughs> so, you know, we found really- like the, It's people. like the early 2000 version of a, of a uh... Uh, mixtape right yeah, yeah yeah on an ipod oh, no, no, no bluetooth yet you just yeah. have wired ipods speaking <laughs> of mixtape another way we got together and this involved a uh, uh, teacher at hill uh, katie mather who was my dorm parent in wendell third floor of wendell i don't know if wendell's boys or girls now but it was boys. girls at the time okay yep, it was the first girls first... dorm but now it's boys okay okay and it was boys for a while and then it was girls for a bit. And it was so fun because I had like the triple in the corner, the corner room on the third floor. It was like the best room. Anyway, and Katie Mather was my dorm parent. And she, how did you know her? Was she your advisor? I had her as an English teacher once and okay. she was also the JV soccer coach. And I might've been sitting at her table. Okay, so, you, so we time. both knew her yeah. in separate ways. This was before we were dating. And she needed to give a secret Santa gift for our dorm to me. And I think she asked you for advice, like, and you didn't know it was me, right? Either way, he like made the mixtapes for her to give to me or something like that. And I still have them in my car and they've got his <laughs> scrappy handwriting on it. And yeah. it was just, it was- CDs, I guess, mixed CDs. Mixed CDs, yeah. <laughs> we don't want to date ourselves too much. Yeah. <laughs> I have mixtapes, but you guys have <laughs> um, All right, well, I think we've covered the dating scene pretty well. Uh, let's move on to other pieces. Um, you know, so tell me a little bit more about, you know, your Hill experience, what was meaningful about it, and what, if anything, sort of maybe got you started on the road to where you are now. Um, you know, Kami, you're in the, you know, entertainment industry, TV, film, um, and, and Greg in the medical industry. Um, you know, did you know that then? Were you taking those kinds of classes, or was it sort of later when you discovered your career interests? I can start. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, I knew I wanted to be in, in entertainment, I think for a while. So I started, I was going to start in journalism. That was my idea. And um, so I guess technically more like news, newsy entertainment. And I did take a journalism class. Uh, I'm blanking on the professor's name, but um, the teacher's name. But so I did a little bit of that. Um, and then I think just what Hill, oh gosh, we talk about Hill, I feel like all the time to, I was so proud to, to be at Hill. One, I think we met and then ended up getting married. We had like really good experiences, but it really taught me like how to compose myself, how to talk to adults. I like getting to college was a shock in many ways. One, cause you don't have any restrictions anymore. I was like, oh my gosh, the lights don't have to go out at 11. But I also was, could tell I was a step ahead in a way of a lot of my, um, like my roommates and a lot of my um, classmates because yeah, I just, I knew how to dress, how to talk to adults. I kind of had a clearer vision, I think coming from Hill. Um, yeah, what do you think? Greg, were you like, taken chem and bio and physics and or did that come later yeah. yeah I was I was definitely I think by the end of by the end of my time at Hill I knew I wanted to do something science oriented I was taking yeah like chemistry AP and um you know the physics courses and everything and um I was really enjoying it but I still I wasn't sure I think at that time I was still thinking about maybe doing like like a PhD program eventually or research or something. I wasn't quite decided. I wasn't so set on 
going into medicine necessarily then that came about probably a little bit later in high school or in uh, college but um yeah hill was for me i guess what made it one of the things that made it so special for me was i had just like a really good friend group i came from i went to montgomery school which sent you know so i think basically like half our class went to hill and half our class went to west town almost yeah. for high school and so i had a few friends already that i was really close with that i went to that went to hill also um and i had a great friend group that really even and then just grew during my time at hill and that was really great for me the other thing about hill that i think has been really valuable looking back on it for me was just the emphasis on like being well-rounded and the fact that you're sort mm -hmm. of not forced but you're strong like you're encouraged to you know play a sport to um do community service to um you know focus on academics that you really have to um you know step out of your comfort zone and really develop multiple areas of your life and i feel like that's yeah. sort of had the biggest impact on me that was one of the reasons i wanted to go to a liberal arts school for college because I liked that and I wanted to continue, you know, I didn't want to focus yet on anything specific. So can either of you remember one incredibly unique moment at Hill or fun experience or something that really stood out to you? Obviously we all have a lot of memories about our time in high school, but something that really, you know, when you think of Hill, it's the first memory that comes to mind. So many, but the thing that comes to mind um, was my relationship with my advisor, Mark Rigg. Um, he was just so supportive and so welcoming. Gosh, maybe like that's the family boarding school style. And I know not everybody feels that way, you know, going to, to boarding school and having to live with your teachers. It's hard, it's really hard for some students. So I preface that because I don't want to sit here and be like, you know, because we we just really enjoyed it. I know it can be hard, a hard transition for some kids, but um, the teachers who really go out of their way to like put you under their wing, I think just makes a huge difference. We were saying the other day, we were like, oh my God, how did those teachers live with these <laughs> kids, teach them? Like, how do you have a life? <laughs> <laughs> so we just really admire them. You yeah, know, come back and come back and teach here. You'll find out right away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah. And how about, how about you, Greg? Any, any standout memories? Um, I don't know about a specific moment, but one thing I always think back on like really fondly was um, the six form coffee. I don't know if they still do that, but like it was, you know, as six yes. formers, you'd get to, you know, go get coffee and then you could walk out into the headmaster's garden when the weather is nice. Yeah. And I just have, multiple memories of just really nice times kind of before you go back and start working or anything and just hanging out with some of my friends sitting on that wall overlooking Pottstown there and having coffee and that just yeah. seemed like such a special uh thing to be able to experience in high school like that well technically it's actually called faculty coffee um it's for six formers but it's hosted by the faculty oh. um, but it's often called six form coffee um, and now the headmaster's garden has recently been completely renovated and is now called the class of 1971 garden. And it's oh. all restored to its original state. And there's a big uh, pergola out there and beautiful planting. So uh, we just, we just finished it at Lawrenceville weekend this year. So we haven't had a chance to have a faculty coffee out there, but you're invited to come back in the spring and experience one of the first um, renewed faculty coffees. We've also had a little bit of a delay on having those because of COVID. We, we didn't have many of them last year, but those are, I think they're fantastic. It's just, yeah. especially in the spring of sixth form year, as you approach that, you know, the final day together, you just are cherishing every moment together with, with your classmates, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. That's how I remember it was just, yeah. Like before we all went off to our various colleges and stuff. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, let's fast forward. I wanna talk about what you guys are up to now, but just a quick question about college. Um, did you guys continue to date during college or did you like take a break or come back or uh oh <laughs> uh no we we took a break for a bit during fresh or yeah i can say freshman year in college <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's not uh it's not seventh form year um uh we took a break for a bit during freshman year and then we continued dating uh pretty much the rest of the way through college yeah i actually think we got back together in the hill parking lot 
Oh my gosh. There's so many memories coming up. Do you remember you came? What a romantic memory, the hill park. I know. It was fresh. the CFTA, here. we just renewed yeah. it. <laughs> it was, was a CFTA or something? Like there was a, no, there was a, um, a concert. I don't know if Grace was performing for Troubles, but oh, we had gone to see a concert. Um, and I just remember, it was May. So it must've been an end of the year thing. Um, but I remember we were still friends and you came and I think your mom maybe came and um, mm -hmm. we had been, you know, on a break and whatever, trying to find ourselves in college and all that good stuff and mm -hmm. really just wanted to still be together. We had so, I mean, we really grew up together at Hill in so many mm -hmm. ways and we just um, had so much in common anyway. So I think that, I think that rekindling happened in the CFTA parking lot. There you go. Well, I'll, yeah. uh, I'll have to let people know that that's where, you, you meet up with your old flames to get me <laughs> uh, Well, that's good. You're welcome back to the CFTA parking lot if that's a better memory than the uh, <laughs> garden. Um, and and you, you mentioned Grace a few times, but some of our viewers may not realize you have a sister, Grace, who I think graduated in 2013. Yeah. My, fir my first year here. Um, yep. And we, and we were, I, I, I noted to you, <laughs> you mentioned Secret Santa, but uh, I, I went back through my emails to see if I had any like, you know, specific memories of Grace. And the only thing I could find was that in her sixth form year, when we had Secret Santa at lunch, she did not get a Secret Santa. Um, Grace. So Grace is, I see Grace is, is watching. So Grace, if you remember, she didn't get a Secret Santa gift, but we found, I think she got a grill coupon instead so you know Ooh. someone out there really let let down grace that that yeah. year. Well, grill coupon arguably even better yeah, <laughs> arguably it depends on the gift giver right not, yeah. better, not better than a mix cd right and yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah yeah all right so fast forward uh, you go to college you guys get back together you get married you do uh obviously you go to medical school you move to lancaster and then to new york so now you're in new york you guys how long have you been living in new york now combined I like to not combine but like since yeah. when did you guys move to New York 2016 is the year I started medical school that's crazy yeah yeah so five years I think we're coming up on six years actually yeah yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and and were you fans of New York or was this like a new you know someone says like everyone's got to live in New York once I've never lived right. in New York. <laughs> I was born in New York but never lived there I want to hear your answer um, I think it was always on our radar. I mean, I think we wanted to spend some time in a city in the Northeast, whether that was Boston or Philadelphia or New York. Um, those were sort of the main areas I was applying to medical school um, and ended up getting into NYU about two weeks before classes started. Um, wait list. Yeah, so it was a very spur of the moment get ready to move to New York in two weeks. So oh. it was exciting, yeah. Yeah, I loved um, it. I love it. I love it so much. I, think I was, was so yeah, happy. Always on your... Yeah. Are you now, do you consider yourself New Yorkers and you're never leaving? Or do you think <laughs> you're here, you are in Connecticut for your vacation. So <laughs> yeah. are you hoping to continue to, you know, have, have a relationship with New York, but not live there? Yeah, I think we'll always have a relationship with New York. I feel like the the rule is you're not allowed to call the unspoken rule is you're not allowed to call yourself a New Yorker until like ten years. So I would love to get to ten years there, but I don't think I can last that long. <laughs> it's a hard city to live in, and the older we get, you know, we want to plan to have a family one day soon. It's like it's not feasible. We're in a fifth floor walk up right now, so. I'll just leave it at that. Like that you get, was fun you get for your steps. You get your steps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That was fun for a minute where it was like, oh my gosh, first, you know, the, this the brick apartment with up five floors and all these little quaint things that after two years it wasn't quaint anymore. It was just yeah. gross <laughs> and annoying. So so you were driven to New York by med school, like that was the impetus of going there. And so, Kami, you had to find a new job, right? Like yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna be there with Greg, and you're giving up your yeah. CBS gig in in Lancaster or what I think you were doing uh but yeah, then you were consulting like but mm -hmm. you know it's not easy to crack into the entertainment field in New York with two weeks notice especially uh so were you pounding the pavement for a while trying to fight the, find the right job yeah that's I you know I had like very little savings but I took all my savings and I think I stayed and worked in Lancaster freelancing for um a company I was like had a good relationship with for another month Greg's um 
uh, parents and your aunt let me stay with you because it was closer commuting. Um, so that was really nice. I stayed with them for a while. And yeah, I got to New York and I just networked like crazy. I hit up Old Hill alumni um, and old BU alumni. And I bought people coffee and or drinks, depending on the time of day, and just said, tell me about what you do. Um, and I did that for almost six months. Um, and while Greg, you know, and it was kind of fun at the same time, too, because I was slowly depleting my savings account, but like still had just enough to survive. And Greg was in school and we were meeting all these new friends and we were living in student housing for NYU and we were kind of just having a blast. And then um, eventually somebody I had um, gotten drinks with who used to work at a &E, um, had thought of me when a job opened up and passed my resume along. And that's how I started at A&E. So as much as, I mean, I know that I'm like the classic networker, I'm a talkative, I'm a people person. I like to do that. So take this, I guess, with a grain of salt, but networking really does pay off. So, cause all it takes was just somebody to think of me when they saw the, the position opening. Mm -hmm. Um, and I started as a freelancer there actually. So I was like a like they call it like a PPW worker. I wasn't full-time and then was gearing up to make the big pitch to my boss, like hire me full-time. I need benefits, all that good stuff. And um, they actually offered me the full-time position and I've been there ever since. So, um, you know, in this day and age of live streaming, uh, we sometimes forget what the big shows are on different networks, right? Like they just all magically appear on Netflix uh -huh. or on uh, Hulu or something like that. But Tell me what the big shows and, and, and podcasts that you're working on yeah. at a &E that some of us might recognize. Yeah, sure. So a &E owns a &E Networks, which used to be big, like Live PD was really big. We don't have that anymore, um, obviously, because of everything that, that went down with police brutality in America. I think that was a really um, powerful move. The network decided to make to pull that show is our number one show is making us a lot of money and they pulled it anyway. So everybody knew live PD. That was a fun show. Um, for a &E, hoarders intervention. So we also own the history channel. So for history, you have all your history documentaries, um, pawn stars, pickers, yeah. Um, the not ancient aliens, the like not so history <laughs> stuff, but it's still history. Um, uh, Lifetime is another network we own. So Dance Moms, we have Project Runway. So <laughs> definitely a, a wide range. And then we also- and, then, and do all those translate into podcasts or then they have a separate podcasting business? Yeah, so those are like our core, like linear shows, which then, you know, go eventually go on demand, get get sold by our sales team to various streaming services after they're on linear. For podcasts, it's like a whole new beast. It's a new business. Um, some of the podcasts are directly related to our shows. There's often like a really good, it's good to have a connection with the linear side because people know the brands really well. So if you can connect, tie it back to the history channel, the lifetime network um people you know presumably will listen but um so we have i survived and cold case files our podcast which are like that's the name of the show too and so some of them are either like audio versions of what the, sh the show is or something like that and then we're we have some new podcasts that we're putting out um one of them is uh, i love a lifetime movie so it's two comedians and they recap lifetime movies it's pretty funny um so that one's kind of tied to lifetime then we have a couple others and we're trying to launch a whole new new slate um coming out this year so many many more to come well if it makes you feel any better whenever i'm at my parents house you still have cable television yep uh, when i flip through the channels i stop at all of your your networks i always think there's going to be yep. something good on a and e on lifetime go. or the history channel so good stuff it's juicy yeah. stuff yeah i probably go to a and e first then yeah. lifetime, then maybe history, but all right, um, all right. Yeah. You always can get a, a feel good movie on li Lifetime Network, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> always. Um, and and uh, one thing I don't know if you know this, but we 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 actually now have our own podcasting studio at Hill. Um, wow. We actually have a full full working television studio at Hill. Um, oh my wow. goodness! That includes a, a podcasting studio, and yours truly is teaching filmmaking so uh no way uh, very cool so I, I teach filmmaking class and um first first year i've been doing it and uh, we're using the new studio and 
uh, pretty fun. You'll have to come and be a guest lecturer or a critic for one of, for our film oh, test. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, really probably didn't work. have that when you were here, since you were still on iPods at the time. <laughs> yeah, not that I can remember. No, yeah. I would have jumped right on that. Yeah. So, Greg, you were at medical school, and it sounds like you wrapped up medical school pretty close to the time of the COVID, you know, the initial COVID pandemic, right? You're, you started in 2017. So by my math, that gets you pretty close to 2000, spring of 2020, right? Yeah. So I was, I had, I graduated medical school in um, the summer of 2019. And um, as part of, um, I'm doing a residency in radiology, but as part of that, you have to do a year uh, your first year out of medical school, like your intern year, they call it in um, internal medicine. So I was doing just like regular, you know, hospital medicine for my first year um, when COVID all started. So um, I was still right there, <clears throat> like um, in the hospital at that time. Um, I spent probably the, the peak of it in New York um, in the ICU at Bellevue um, and then also some time um, at the Manhattan VA but most of it probably at Bellevue Hospital, which is the biggest public hospital in Manhattan. So now obviously a lot of us have, you know, read about or seen images of what that was like in New York City, especially. And we've all seen people, you know, hanging out of their windows, banging pots and pans in honor of the, the doctors and the constant sounds of ambulances and that sort of thing. It, it does seem like a little bit of a distant past, even though it really was only two years ago. Um, you know, can you summarize like what that experience was like, you know, uh, was it grueling? Was it, was there any silver lining to it? You know, was it, um, did you learn a lot? I mean, what, what, what would you, how would you describe that on your best day uh, about what that was like? Sure. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, yeah, it was, it was definitely grueling. It was, um, I think, yeah, it does feel so far in the past now, really, when I think about it, but it's, it's, was, it's difficult to think back and really kind of recall the early days of it when the scary part was you know we didn't really know a lot about it we didn't know exactly how to treat it or how it was going to affect everything and how it was transmitted exactly so um as things we had schedules laid out for the whole year and as things got worse and worse you know our schedules slowly disappeared and they changed us everyone basically to icu or nights and it was just it was a really crazy time yeah i'd come in um each day and there'd be new regulations or new rules or um new teams that had popped up in the hospital they opened up like entire new floors and wards um you know it, i mean it was fully full of hazmat type suit at that point or yeah, yeah. I mean, it was, and it was, you know, we were still so short on the PPE then. I had to make like, we, were, we would be given like one mask for a week and I'd have to just like, I remember I'd spray it like with like Lysol and shake it up in a paper bag at the end of each shift. Um, Kami went to stay with her parents here for about six weeks because, you know, we didn't, I didn't want to expose her when I got home, but it was, yeah, I mean, it was, I really never thought I'd see hospitals in America like that. It really felt like a like a, a war zone or like it was just, you know, the ICUs especially were just doubled up patients in every room. Um, you know, you'd come in and it would be feel very chaotic and overwhelming from the moment you got there till 12 hours later when you left and then you'd come in the next day and it'd be the same thing. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I guess, yeah, it was, so it was a lot, but it was, um, I guess one, if I were to say an upside, I guess it would be just that, you know, it, in some ways it also felt, you know, in the midst of all that to feel like I was useful. Like I was a very, you know, valued member of society at that time, I was really making a difference. Um, so that was a good feeling to come out of it. And, you know, I did learn a lot, you know, it's hopefully, yeah. hopefully COVID will be something distant in the past by the time I have kids or grandkids, but I'll, you know, be able to talk about my first year as a doctor being yeah. in the interviews when COVID started. I was I know, obviously we're, we're back in session right now, but it's a little bit complicated with Omicron and mm -hmm. high rates. We're, we're doing okay, but I was sitting at lunch today. We're having sort of 
we're having buffet lunches, not seated lunches, but we sit with our advisory groups or something like that. And, but we're you know, two seats apart from each other. And as soon as we finish eating, we put our masks on that sort of thing. And I just said, you know, someday we're going to look back on these photographs of Hill students in the dining hall wearing masks. And we're just going to, you know, it's just going to be this curiosity. Um, you know, it's just, uh, it's been a really interesting ride here at the school. I can only imagine what it's been like for you. And, um, you know, we, we're, we're fortunate that we have um, Kristen Spencer, uh, our medical director, doctor on our staff, who has really helped us now. I mean, gosh, what we would have, I can't even imagine what we would have done had it not been for her. Um, but I, I know that feeling of feeling valued uh, because, you know, we, we just were fortunate to have, you know, so many people that were supporting us. And you mentioned PPE, like I'd forgotten that term. Yeah. We had, we had families from all over the world sending us PPE because we couldn't get it. And then we got so much of it that we started giving, at, giving it out to first responders in Pottstown. And um, yeah, but you know, now you can go on Amazon and pretty much get what you need, um, pretty much. But yeah. yeah. Um, but now you're in a different, I mean, you're now doing mostly radiology. You're not as patient uh, facing, right? Yeah. Um, and, but I mean, as far as I understand, the Omicron wave is, I mean, maybe coming down off of its peak in New York a little bit, but the last few weeks certainly have had to been busy for all uh, physicians in New York, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely been busier. And, you know, as part of, you know, my job as like a radiology resident on the weekends or holidays, sometimes we'll have to cover the emergency department, like um, all the scans, all the CT scans and um, x-rays and stuff that get done in the emergency department on the weekends or holidays. And a couple of weeks ago, I had one of those shifts and it was just, you know, almost every patient that came in, I, you know, I'd go through the chart and they'd be COVID positive or um, and a lot of the time also they'd come in with like something else like appendicitis and then they just happen to be COVID positive. So um, luckily the hospital has not been, at least the, in my experience, has not been as nearly as overwhelmed or um, full as during the first wave or during Delta. Yeah. Uh, but I, yeah, probably the busiest thing has just been other residents and staff getting sick yeah. and having to cover extra shifts and things like that. So it's been a it's been a bit busier and more stressful for that, but it definitely, hopefully seems like the cases are starting to go down in New York, so. Yeah. And even though you're not in the midst of a war zone like you were two years ago, does it still have the same rewarding feeling for you and that you feel that, you know, you're, you're you know, or, or do you miss that sort of craziness uh, in a way? Uh, are you perfectly happy with, with where it is? <laughs> um, I am perfectly happy. Uh, I don't have any regrets or anything. I, I really enjoy radiology. Um, it's a bit more uh, calm and thoughtful and still really interesting. Um, and I do still feel like I'm valuable and like I'm making a difference. Um, maybe sometimes I miss some of that interaction and stuff, but only briefly. And then, you know, I get to come home at a reasonable hour and right. the weekend right. off and I'm not as many night go, shifts. Go, and stuff, go for so. a run. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Now is, is Arlo, it sounds like he's two years old, he might be a COVID puppy. <laughs> he was a planned decision, I will say, but we planned for him like late January. So technically, I guess he was a COVID puppy, yeah. but I always say yeah, he was. You guys like are a, talking about Arlo like he's a like a child, right? A baby, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, uh, we got our dog Ruben just before the pandemic and uh, gosh, it really got us through um, to have yeah. someone to, that really didn't judge you and was just quiet all the time. <laughs> so yeah. Got you out on walks. I still remember there was like a New Yorker cartoon um, uh, during the middle of COVID and it was like the dog sitting on his dog bed and the owner says, come on, one more walk today. And the dog's like you know, <laughs> yeah. resisting, didn't want to go on another walk. That yeah. was our only exercise in getting out of the house at the time. But um, well, great. Well, you know, this is uh, you know, terrific. I want to ask you a few more questions, but I wanted to let our audience know that if they have any questions, um, now would be a good time to add them. Um, you can either add them in the Q&A box, or if you'd like to raise your hand and ask a question, we can call you up. Um, 
And, uh, you know, unfortunately, some of our viewers will be watching this recorded, so they won't be able to ask their questions. So they're just going to have to rely on me asking questions. So, um, so, so now one of the, uh, so that's the reminder. So go ahead and raise your hand or ask questions. Um, so here you guys are, you're in New York City. You've had a pretty long relationship, right? You've been dating since high school with one year break. We'll call that a little hiatus. Um, and, you know, now you're both pretty deep into your careers. You know, you have found, it sounds like you found your calling and what you want to do. Um, how do you make that work as a, as a young couple balancing different schedules and different priorities and, you know, who's taking care of Arlo and, uh, you know, how <laughs> different, you know, vac I know right now you're working, Kami, and you're on a short vacation now, Greg, and, you know, how, how are you guys making that work? You know, I, I think, people watch this podcast and some of them are watching because of it's, you know, the career that someone has is pretty interesting or their life story. But, you know, others of us are just trying to get through, you know, our regular lives as uh, people and couples and, you know, uh, aspiring professionals. So I think that would be interesting to hear from you, how you guys are making that work without getting into too much personal detail, I think. Yeah, it's, it's hard. I think, um, you know, it was, it was definitely really, the first few years of marriage were really fun. Like we didn't have, we weren't fully into our careers yet. So it was very easy. Living in Lancaster was a blast. I mean, we just had a huge apartment for our so much less rent than we're paying now in New York. And we were still like only a year or two out of college. So at first it was very easy, but you know, we got the dog and COVID hit and then I started school and our careers got very challenging kind of all at the same time. Um, so it's definitely the past year or so has been kind of rough, just like, gosh, so much planning has to go into every day, every hour of our day. Like who's going to walk the dog? Who's going to get the groceries? Who's going to like not curse as they're walking up the five flights of stairs. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, but we're, we are looking forward to me being done school and Greg being done residency. That's kind of the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And I think things are gonna um, really look up after that. But in general, like, you know, we're so happy. We have so many friends from Hill. We still see, keep in touch with both in New York or we actually were in Vail. We reached out to Ben Eberhart, the Eberharts, Ellen, uh, Ellen Eberhart also we see in New York sometimes. And Greg skied with Ben and we went to dinner. We spent like three nights with him by accident. This was um, last week when we were, we were last skiing. Week, last week, so. And we hadn't seen him in like six years, I don't think. Um, but, you know, that's just how it goes. So we have lots of, uh, of fun amidst all the busyness, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just, yeah, it's like a constant conversation of planning. Yeah. That's probably 90% of the texts we send to each other throughout yeah. the day are like, okay, so I'll take Arlo out when I get home. <laughs> if you can start dinner and then I'll, you know, it's it's just a lot of planning, but yeah. Um, it's very busy and it's tiring sometimes, but it's also, you know, it's rewarding and just have to remind ourselves that this is the life we wanted. I like to think that if yeah. me at the Hill School could see us now, that mm -hmm. I would be very much like that. That's exactly like what I was hoping yeah. to be doing by the time. Cute, I was cutest there. couple, right? We, they knew. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> uh, well, there's a question here in the Q&A box. Um, about uh, radiology um, and just uh, I'll sort of paraphrase but the question is sort of you mentioned that radiology is a little bit more thoughtful a little bit more calm what is it that you like about radiology and would you encourage someone to go in and why would you encourage someone to go into radiology yeah um, so I guess radiology is really interesting to me because it's it's sort of goes back to the way I feel like that um, I like the well-roundedness of Hill and liberal arts school. And you really get to think uh, a lot of different areas of medicine that you can go into. You're very specialized and you really, you know, you might be an orthopedic surgeon or something and you basically do knee and hip replacements all day and see the same sort of patients mostly. But um, within radiology, you really get to experience a lot of different areas of medicine and you get to think about a lot of different things. Um, you know, if you see something on a scan that doesn't really make sense, you can really delve into the chart and think about things a lot more. The other great thing about it is any sort of interesting or 
rare or weird case that comes through the hospital is going to get a scan at some point, whether it's just an x-ray or a CT or something like that. So you get to see pretty much all the really interesting things that come through. Um, and the other thing I like about it too is the people in it tend to be much more relaxed and thoughtful because they've also been attracted to that aspect of it. And so, you know, it's, it's a pretty, it's more of a normal schedule, less of the, once you get out of residency, less of the overnight and weekend calls and stuff. Um, and that's also another por really important part to me when I was looking for a career was, you know, I want to have a fulfilling and um, challenging career, but I also want to be able to come home um, to my family and my dog and go for a run and, you know, feel like I have my weekends and some time to myself too. So that's another great aspect about it. All right. So this isn't, this is not in the Q and A, but what is the strangest thing you've seen on one of these scan lectures <laughs> that you can say that's PG? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I've heard about some maybe not so <laughs> Um oh man. Okay. Um yeah, well there's <laughs> people swallow a lot of things. Yeah, people swallow coins and spoons and things like that. Um, you know, or a child I've seen swallow a tooth or actually inhale a tooth. Ooh. Um yeah, I've seen that. Bullet fragments, things like that. Yeah. Um yeah, that's pretty PG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a little weird. other things I could mention it, but well, I'll save that for after the after everyone else is gone. The after party. <laughs> Jamie, uh, there's a question here just about sort of the future of podcasting and video, and you know what what are you seeing that maybe we're not seeing um, as you know regular viewers? What, what do you think is you know, five years down the road? It's so hard to tell because it's changing so fast. I think one of the hardest things is that right now we were talking about this today at work, like everybody talked about the digital, the digital age being so great and that we'd be able to learn so much from our, like who's watching, right? Cause back when it was just cable and linear television, you know, they just sent out surveys to people and someone in the household would say, I watch this. I, I watch that. I have one TV in my house. Well, you know, now we can watch on our computers and we can watch on smart TVs, but we actually don't get, data very good data at all it's still like the wild wild west every partner has a different way that they're gathering data and we can't really like aggregate it so you know everybody says that cable is going to die so i used to work in more of the traditional cable world and now i've moved over to streaming at a &E. and everybody said in in both areas you know cables cables dying well it's not dying that quickly actually because digital is just too new and too scary and we don't really know exactly like how people are watching. So I think it's still a long way to go before people get rid of cable completely. Um, you can count on my parents for a while longer. <laughs> I know mine too. Well, I hope so. They just said the other day. I use their password though a lot to get on when I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Me too. Me too. But um, yeah, so, so we'll see. I think it's still change is going to be slow. Well, I have a sneaking suspicion that given your combined uh, adoration for the Hill School, that maybe there's a future where you guys come back to Hill and <laughs> you can teach or I'd be lying if I didn't coach. I said I didn't think about it ever, you know, yeah, the cross country team. For sure. Yeah. We have good <laughs> hospitals in the area. I'm sure they need radiologists. You know, you never know. Hey, yeah, you never know. Mm -hmm. Well, I really want to join you. Uh, thank you guys for joining us tonight. Um, it's Thanks been fun uh, catching up with you and hearing this Hill Love story and how it's grown um, and where it's taken you. And um, certainly uh, I view you as great ambassadors for the school and really proud that the school turns out people that are you know, so committed to each other and so committed to their communities and to their work um, and to their friends. So, um, and to their dog, of course, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta end on Arlo. Um, <laughs> But uh, I hope that you'll uh, stop by campus next time you're up in Pennsylvania. Um, by then, our COVID protocol should allow you to come onto campus pretty easily. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you guys are, you guys can, you're, you've been through it all. You can make it to campus, maybe to the parking lot at least. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, thanks so much for having us. This yeah, is really thank fun. you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I do need to just, uh, hold on, let's. I'm going to share my screen again. We're going to see that last picture. There it is. 
They're pretty cute. Oh, there we I don't are. know the mustache though. They're, they're really, it, it just left my screen. I don't know the <laughs> Looks like the same glasses though. You know, you got yeah, glasses. glasses. The mustache comes and goes throughout the year sometimes. <laughs> your hair was pretty. Your hair was pretty blonde back then, Greg. I know. Yeah, it was. It used to be a lot blonder. Yeah. Yeah. You guys still have your hill tie and scarf somewhere safe. Yeah, somewhere. Somewhere. I have I'm the blazer like, upstairs for blazer sure. Blazer and the letter sweater, at least, for the, sure. The, the yeah. six form blazer still fit, though. That's the question. <laughs> it was always too big for me. Still probably <laughs> is. I saw it in one of the other chats you did, maybe with, I forget, but that they used to be boys' blazers, like men's for the women. So yeah, they, they, were all, they were all men's blazers. Now we have fitted blazers for, That's good. for the young women. And, and uh, we've also moved, I think now, I can't remember if it's, um we've changed brands a few times uh who makes the blazers the, the people that used to make the blazers here in Pottstown went out of business uh, wise and corns which is like an old dress shop and so mm -hmm. i think we now use either tommy hilfiger or lands End, one of those two so oh nice in any event well if you can fit into your blazer at your 50th reunion you're doing well so. <laughs> every time we have someone that can still fit in so <laughs> um well i hope that uh thanks thanks to both of you for joining us i hope uh, our audience will join us on February 15th when we welcome Sam Sadu, class of 01, who's the vice chairman, president and chief of Customers Bank here in Pennsylvania and executive officer there. That should be a good show as well. Uh, in the meantime, I wish all of you good health uh, during this challenging time. And um, I hope you'll uh, tune in again next time. Greg, Kami, thanks for making time during your sort of vacation there. And uh, uh, please give my best to your sister, Grace. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye.